Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, John Simmons. I uh, work for the Rhode Island Public Expenditure Council. Uh, there are letters that we have provided on the three bills that we'll talk about uh, uh, this evening, and I'll try to brief, be briefer after Elizabeth and uh, Lynette mentioned some of the issues. I'd like to go first, if I may, on the paid sick leave. Uh, again, I will repeat the item of, for instance, right now with, with the state uh, on our national rankings. We all know what our rankings are in business regulations, the requirements, the mandates that employers have within the state. We are probably one of the worst, if not the worst, in the country on the business climate, cost of doing business within the state. We now come forward and we look at this particular program, and as I think Elizabeth said, it was a very interesting piece when one looks at the TDI and the TCI nationally. Uh, there are several states that offer it, but only, again, California seems to be the only other state that offers all three of the benefits. Uh, so we believe that this, again, provides us to be an outlier. California's economy is much more interdependent. It is a strong enough economy. And Rhode Island, we do not believe, is a strong enough economy to be in the same category, the same mandates, the same requirements that a, a state like California does. The next would be is on the census. Uh, the details of the statute itself, and Lynette and uh, Elizabeth mentioned some of the detail parts of it. We're concerned against on the national companies that are within Rhode Island that will have to alter their practices if one looks at the legislation that is being proposed, which is one of the most generous of all the ones that we've looked at in the country. The national companies, will they have to change their administration, their accru accruing process, for instance, the accrue process in the statute? Is it followed by other companies since they are not exempted out? The small, small companies as well as the larger ones are not exempted out. When you look at the other issues, for instance, uh, uh, if you look at the Department of Labor and Training today, just so you all know, about 80 percent of the companies in Rhode Island already provide sick leave in some form. It is relatively high nationally. It's one of the highest, we think, nationally on coverage for health care already. And one looks at the statistics over time. Rhode Island is a faster growing on health care or sick leave coverage because that, again, is one of the issues that we look at is the predominant is this is a state involvement interjecting itself in the management of how a company is run and provision of a benefit. And we believe that that if one looks at it is one of our major one one of our concerns because again the uh, the marketplace is driving it the marketplace will if, if sick leave benefit is an important benefit for employees it'll be provided by employers to get again on the terms and conditions of it I, I won't spend a lot of time on that one of the things that was not mentioned on this is the cost of cost of it to employers now here we've looked at a variety of studies some that are very promotional of paid sick leave, and we see that the numbers could be one and a half to two percent of payroll for this benefit. If you heard the, the, the discussion by one restaurateur, if you believe that your payroll is going to go up one to two percent to cover the cost of this benefit, and your margins now are very relatively small. Some of the other studies have said it goes up to almost five percent of sales to pay for this cost. And these are done by the Institute of Women's Studies. So and we have sites in our written on each one of those uh, points. The other is, uh, what is it really get getting for us? One of the items is turnover. There are several studies that were done in regards to the impact, because this is supposedly good for employers because it will stop turnover. This is supposed to be good for employers because the presenteeism will change. When one looks at the facts of the analysis and surveys that are done, actually the turnover rate does not change. Matter of fact, companies who are providing the health care, right, nor the, the sick leave benefit, are already providing it, so the competition and the turnover now becomes less if everyone has to provide that same benefit. There is no difference between a company that has it today to keep the turnover down versus someone who doesn't. On the other, the presenteeism, here again, I would agree with the previous speaker that presenteeism is one of the major issues that is going to be coming to the front. However, when one brings up the little spray and says this is the solving of presenteeism, has to look at the underlying analysis of the major 10 or 12 issues that affect presenteeism. Cancer, a variety of the other ones, are not an issue that you take one day off. This is a major fundamental issue. There are many studies that are saying it's a broader issue. As a matter of fact, when one looks at the study in Connecticut and elsewhere, the presenteeism didn't work. As a matter of fact, people came into work sick as much as they did prior to having the, the sick leave benefit pushed onto the employers. With that in mind, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move, if, if you want, on the other two issues on uh, the minimum wage. Uh, on the minimum wage, and again, we've provided 
uh, comments, written comments on both of these, along with the Rhode Island Business Coalition, has provided letters in opposition to those three pieces of legislation. I think they should be included in the packet, and those include a variety of probably the majority of all the trade associations representing employers in the state.